I was spray painting this week and there's just gray spray paint. Like, how do you get spray paint off your hands? Water. No, because that would have worked. Hi everybody, uh, welcome to this week's episode of Star Citizen Live. Uh, mining and salvage and tractor beams, oh my. Uh, I'm your host, uh, creative content lead, Jared Huckabee. I almost stumbled on my own title there again. And if you've never seen Star Citizen Live before, that's where we take about an hour out of the end of our week and we invite our devs uh, onto the show uh, to chat. Uh, their work on Star Citizen, their, sometimes their history, uh, getting into the industry, sometimes it's just a get to know you thing. Uh, sometimes we do a game dev thing where you see how they, how, how they make stuff, and sometimes we answer your uh, community questions. Uh, on the show this week, we have uh, two folks who probably need no introduction, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, the, uh, 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 I was trying to think of a real fun... I've got the King's Coronation on my brain here. I was going to the kings of, of EUPU, uh, Dan Truffin and Torsten Lyman. Dan, Torsten, how you doing? I'm fine. Hey, <laughs> doing good? <laughs> you All know, good? I said it, we were joking, like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm talking to Frank for folks. How you doing? Fine. Fine. No, that's right. Um, Dan, Torsten, because every show is somebody's first show, uh, let's take a few moments to introduce yourselves, uh, tell everybody who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. Um, hi, I'm Dan Truffin. I'm the Assistant uh, Design Director for PU Content, and uh, I oversee a lot of the new work that's being done for Pyro, uh, but not only the content side, I also oversee uh, the UPU team, which Thorsten can talk a bit more. Okay. Thorsten. Hello. Um Torsten. I'm a lead system designer uh, for the EOPU team. And uh, yeah, the EOPU team is basically responsible for like most of the industrial gameplay loops that uh, we have in our game. So as, a, as an expansion on that, the, you, your teams are responsible for the gameplay features, the, 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 the functionality of mining, the functionality of salvage, the functionality of tractor beams and stuff. And then that goes on to other teams like the mission feature team or, 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 or other uh, sandbox teams like Sandbox 1, Sandbox 2 or the Montreal team. And they create missions and specific uh, gameplay content to do in the Persistent Universe with the tools and the features that you, your, you and your team uh, create and provide. Yeah, basically, we create these uh, sandbox systems that then get, well, utilized in, in those defined yeah. gameplay scenarios that are then like yeah. missions or any other content set up, yes. So just to beat the, that. Oh, go ahead, Dan. Sorry. Uh, the flow kind of goes where the, the feature teams create a feature and they try to open up a, a few hooks for the mission guys. Uh, and uh, then the mission guys come back and go, hey, could we also get some extra functionality here and they try to build the mission the mission feature team builds a mission module uh, that's being can be used and combined with other mission modules to create content and they build the initial content and then the mission content guys take that over and build they, they go wide and build uh, a, a large amount of missions using all of this well everything everyone has built in this chain so to drive the sandbox uh, metaphor right into the ground uh, your team is the one that puts the the, the shovel and the rake and the pail in the sandbox, and then the other teams come in and take those, those things and build the castles and stuff out of it. I think that correct. Yeah, sandbox. And do people do kids play in sandboxes anymore? Like, do they have sandboxes at parks anymore, or are we just really old? They they do. I have a neighbor kid that ju does just that all day in screen. All right. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to talk over a couple things that uh, the EU PU team uh, has worked on. Uh, some that some that you've been iterating on for uh, quite some time. Uh, others that you know are relatively new, like salvage. I want to start with mining. Now, way back when we did a. Uh, we did what we thought was going to be our last ISC piece on mining for a while. Like, yeah, mining was set, you know, it, it's, it's, it's done. We're really happy where it was. And then uh, about a year later, we're like, nope, we, we're doing more updates that are coming in the upcoming Alpha 319, which is currently in wave one or two PTU testing right now. Uh, um, what, was, what was our, what pulled us back into mining when we thought we were out for a while? 
but one of the main aspects was actually the the community feedback that we received and that was pointing out that we were lacking some content especially for for bigger groups and uh like uh, the yeah, mining in a mole in the in our multi crew mining ship wasn't fun anymore and uh like there wasn't a real challenge uh, even though that we thought back then that uh like mining could be in particular situations especially for new players uh, a bit more challenging and uh yeah we we learned the quick way <laughs> that we were a bit off with with our uh, assumptions there and uh yeah basically I made us rethink some of the, the the decisions we made with mining and basically let us back at least uh to the drawing board not from the like actual gameplay or the like the the, the main gameplay that you're seeing but more on the balancing side so basically the mining that you will find now in 319 is a it's not comparable to the mining that you that you knew from from 318 and before yeah it's a lot of the feedback I'm, I'm already seeing from uh, on streams and on uh, YouTube and uh, in uh, Spectrum is that you know pe people are getting in there and besides a bunch of the performance improvements that you know uh, that improve the overall 319 experience from what's currently on 318 live servers, uh, there are a lot more opportunities with mining, uh, uh, more ways to customize your, mine, your, your mineable experience. Uh, some of that has to do with you know the tractor beam stuff that we'll, that we'll get into in a little bit, but. Uh, because we haven't talked about what specifically is in 319 right now, uh, can you give us a, a rundown of the mining improvements? <laughs> I know I, 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 sh I realize I'm halfway through the question, and I'm like, I should have really like told them to have the Confluence page up and running, you know, so he doesn't have to pull all this stuff out of his head. But what can, uh, sum it up for us? What 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 does change in 319 for mining? Okay, the, the short version is everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, yeah, let me. So I will probably forget some things because yeah. the list is actually quite bigger than 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 I was imagining. Like because I I wrote even the uh, the the summary for our life experience team what actually changed and that list got bigger than I expected uh, mm -hmm. to be honest. But yeah, let's let's start with uh, the resources. I think that is the the biggest change because it not only affects the mining itself but it also has an impact on trading uh, because right now uh, resources are have resources have distinct uh, locations in Stanton that means uh, we defined now uh, seven uh, standard materials that have seven different locations or that can be in the combination of those uh, in those locations and those standard materials or those standard resources you only find in those particular uh, locations. For example, the standard is uh, copper and iron. So those you will only find in dedicated locations uh, throughout Stanton. And uh, in addition to that, we introduced uh, rarity to some resources. And those are, uh, yeah, we have a uh, common one, we have uncommon one, and we have uh, one rare one, which is a uh, quantanium. So those are now more, more sparse. In, in its general or, or appearance, and uh, yeah, so that is like the 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 thing that you will notice uh, at the, at first sight. Uh, another thing that is more hidden behind is that each resource now has its distinct density. So that means that uh, even though the the rocks look very similar in size in comparison to before, uh, they will have now drastically different masses. So heavier elements will have a huge impact on the the mass of the rock, and uh, yeah, that that actually helped us a bit because that um, made certain materials now more uh, like more viable for for bigger ships or bigger lasers, while others are now um, better suited for for smaller ships or, or single player ships and uh, smaller lasers. So that that was already a, a Big win for us. Um, in addition to that, uh, we also introduced a new mineable that is called Genalite. Uh, that is uh, something that we introduced for FPS mining solely, and it's located in the new caves. So, um, yeah, basically, we wanted to make uh, mining outside of prison more attractive, and now we have this super rare 
uh, mineable there that uh, will earn you a fortune if you find it. And uh, yeah, on the resource side, not only did we update the um, a distribution of the, the standard materials and the materials in general. We also adjusted all the probabilities of each of the sub-elements and now there are no more... Well, for us, we have a better <laughs> overview of what resources are where, but uh, for for players, it is like, I think, more of a... Yeah, I think it's, it's more fun to actually look for certain materials than it was before. Also, we they'll, they'll have to discover. They'll yeah, they have, have to, to discover, discover a completely new. It's a completely new distribution, and it's, it might be annoying or exciting, depending on everyone's perspective on life. Uh, yeah, they... one, one thing I wanted to add is one thing that uh, we definitely add, and I hope this helps, is uh, a lot of improvements on the mining UI uh, and UX. Yes. Uh, so there's there's a lot of small little things that just added together. They did just make it more user friendly. They make make it easier for a beginner to understand exactly what's happening, why is it happening, and all. On the resources, there is even things or rule sets that are still uncovered. So I leave it up to the community or to uncover those rule sets uh, because there might be some things that would help you to look for for certain materials uh, more targeted. Um, yeah, but but that all for for the resources. Dan already talked about the UI changes. So uh, actually, a shout out to to a person that is like ruling all our UI work in our team. That is Bastian. So Bastian did a an amazing job uh, with with all the UI work that that uh, that we now have done uh, for for the update. Yeah, so for the UI, we, as Dan stated, it's now more user friendly. So we have clear indicators for how, what what you actually have equipped. We now have a dedicated helper that tells you if you should actually try out the rock that you are facing, or you should call in a friend because it says impossible and impossible means impossible for, for, for your current setup. So you definitely will need some help there. And uh, yeah, uh, one, one more thing that I forgot, it's actually a huge list. Like one more thing I forgot is that we now have even different scaling uh, for, for the resources. So uh, beforehand we had very limited scaling for, for the size of the rocks you find on, on, uh, on those planets. Uh, so now you even, if you're lucky, you even find like those little nuggets that, that you don't even have to break. You can just scoop them up. And like, so even if you were unlucky and didn't have the matching uh, mining heads equipped, uh, you at least got away with, with something. And that directly leads to the, the next big update, which is the mining heads. So what we did there is... Yeah, we basically started from scratch. So um, we mapped out uh, all the, the resources and um, defined their own individual parameter, meaning like each resource has their own uh, way of affecting the, the resistance and their own way of affecting the optimal window or the instability and all those parameters that you know from the mining heads. And we mapped that against the, the mining heads. And then what we did was uh, made some values exclusive for some of the sub items and uh, basically did a full clean up of the, all the items th that we had and uh, then mapped certain type of combinations and the, the mining heads towards those uh, properties of the resources. So what we did is have one mining head where we on our Excel sheets calculated that this these will work better uh, with, with uh, certain resources while others uh, won't have such a benefit there. Doesn't mean that they won't work, but uh, so yeah, it, it will be like more yeah, challenging for players for, with certain laser combinations to crack open uh, yeah, certain, certain type of rocks. Uh, and I'm gonna interject here. Uh, we, we, we made it about 13 minutes into the show before the common question comes in. Uh, Tom, go ahead and meet me at camera two. Hi, Shittius. That's really your name in Twitch. Uh, Shittius was the first person to ask if this show was live. Uh, no, it's not. It's pre-taped, and I just knew you were going to ask. I can also see through the screen into your room, and it's time to throw away all those caffeine-free 
Diet Coke cans. Okay. Uh, we, have to sit, <laughs> we have to sit next time with a newspaper here and prove that. I don't know. There's, a, there's, always, there's always somebody every show. Um, so with mining, uh, before we move on to stuff, uh, let's talk... So that's, that's, so that's what we're doing for 319, a little bit about what we're doing for 319. Obviously not a comprehensive list because I pulled the question out without preparing you and you didn't have the comprehensive, the comprehensive list, that's, that's on me. Uh, can you give us a little bit about where we wanna go with mining going forward after 319? Is this now it for a while or is there something else in the back of our head we already know uh, we, wanna, we wanna do as our next steps? So there are definitely some some next steps uh, that are already planned out. Uh, some that I don't want to talk about yet, but others that we can definitely talk about, which is uh, for crafting and refining. Uh, like this, the distribution of the resources helps us drastically to already plan out all the next steps that will, as Dan so nicely always con mentions. It's like we, we really want to close out the loop, right? So you start at mining, you pick up the resources, may it be mining, may it be salvage, then you bring it to your refinery, you refine it to the processed goods, and once you have it in the processed goods, you bring it to uh, your crafting facility, crafting ship, crafting whatever, and then you create uh, the yeah, requested items out of them, and then you can even like circle back to like recycling the the goods that you created and bring them back into the into the loop. So, yeah, this is this is the the ultimate goal. And with the current mining update, we are one step closer to to achieving that. While uh, yeah, we, we I think we already mentioned it that we are already working on the next steps uh, in our team. So um, yeah, it, it's an active development. Uh, yeah, but um, no, it will not only be so. But talking about mining in particular, no, that that that's not the end of it. <laughs> and the reason is because there are still some ships missing that uh, were announced, right. and they should have their their own treatment of how how you play mining with those right. things like the Orion. And, uh, yeah, exactly. And and I think there's there's also a lot of the things that are going to change exactly as we said. We Eventually, it all leads to crafting and making your own items out of nothing. You start out of nothing with a ship and you get this. But it's, there's very few, there's a few, few very interesting things along the way. One of the closest things right now are going to be those mining sacks. We need to be able to eject, collect, put into a refinery, process all that or turn into to refined materials, take that to a refining uh, a manufacturing uh, ship or sell it or whatever you want to do so this the the main thing is like we're we're seeing this as a mining operation we're seeing this as mining refining hauling production crafting right. manufacturing operation that you can run you can run it with two three people and or you can run it on a full scale where you have whatever 20 prospectors five refinery ships three haulers escort for all of them uh, it's all that thing. Once that ecosystem starts starts going, you're going to see some amazing operations in Star Citizen. All these uh, all these loops, you know, connect to form a chain. They they all link into one, into another, into another. To basically, you know, work to do mining is also work that will affect crafting, will affect refining and stuff. It's all building out uh, this way, this industrial way of life in the persistent universe. Basically. Exactly, and pretty, pretty much all of these industrial professions are going to feed into some form of refining slash crafting. That's that's kind of the, the pinnacle of everything, whether you do it from mining, whether you do it from salvaging, or any other system that's going to be coming down the line, whatever, picking lovely flowers, because they have some oil that you can extract from them and use that to lubricate your machine guns or whatever. That's a different... So it all feeds into this thing where you can produce your own items and create a probably hopefully a very flourishing economy where people trade whatever they produce today with whatever someone else produced. So let's, 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 let's flip over to another one of those game loops that's linked salvage. Uh, uh, obviously salvage, you know, you made its debut in, in 318 now. Yep. We are talking about it for so long. It's hard to, hmm. uh, what's, how's that going? How, how's the response to that been? Are you, are you happy with it? Are you, 
content with it? Or do you, do you see nothing but the problems and where you want to go next? Uh, I invite you to be very candid in this. What, uh, tell, tell, me, tell me how, you, how you're seeing Salvage right now after, the, after its release. Come on, Dan. Oh, should I do it? I, I thought I'd leave this one to Torsten. Okay. This, he, this, is, this is his baby. He, he started <laughs> this. He brought it to completion. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. From mining, I have a lot of things to say because I started it, and then Torsten is bring, bringing it to completion. But for this one, I, I'd rather let Torsten okay. take it. So uh, the question was where, where, where we are with, with it and how happy we are. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with what what we have and especially with the short time uh, that we actually got to 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 work on that like yeah i know you all have been waiting for it for quite some time but actually the 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 uh you know the the time frame it was thrown at us was quite short so i'm i'm really happy with with what we uh pulled out or what we 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 achieved in that in that time frame and i think it's I think I mentioned it already at some point uh, that what I like the most about the the salvage that was introduced with 3.18, so the hull scraping, is that it is such a nice contrast to all the other gameplay loops that we have. Right? We have a very action-based combat, or we have an action-based combat. We have uh, mining that, that is very, uh, now even more than, than before, but it is uh, like challenging in terms of uh, itemization planning and preparation mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. While uh, hull scraping right now is uh, you, you jump into your, your vulture or in your, into your reclaimer, you drive past some, some debris pieces and you can just put on some music and relax and just scrape off their hull. And I think that is this, like, I think good games are made out of those, like a variety of systems that deliver certain deliver on certain demands that you as the player have and sometimes you know, you, you you might have a had a rough day so what you need is just sit back relax and i think hull scraping is the perfect loop for that so yeah i'm i'm really happy with where we at and yeah we what i'm also proud of is that we uh managed to to deliver our first glimpse of crafting so having that in there with the with the filler station is also a very nice thing to have. So it's like already a glimpse for for all of you players. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. what's to come. You, you, you touch on something. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry, I just wanted to fill in on this. It's kind of funny because when we started working on this, uh, there was a bit of a clash of ideas, which always happens with uh, with anything you're designing. Uh, Thorsten was always trying to deliver this more chilled experience, just you and your ship in the middle of nowhere, just hot, hot scraping uh, whatever you found. And I was like, no, no, it needs to be challenging. It needs to explode if you touch a wire or something <laughs> like this. And I'm like, no, no, just, let's let's do it this way. And indeed, you need to have the variety. If everything explodes the second you do something wrong, you're always you always have that tension. So it's nice to have the ups and downs. There will be there will be chances for explosions and stuff like this with with other gameplay or with, maybe with other parts of salvage. But uh, yeah, that it's it's nice to have a, a mix of everything. And I do have to to add to what Thorsten just said is like the team pulled off an amazing an amazing feature. There were a lot of dependencies on other team, and it came at a, at a time when a lot of heavy tech was coming, and yeah. it kind of influenced the, the delivery. And they they did an amazing job. Yeah, yeah. actually, on that <clears throat> before it's forgotten, because without the weapon feature team that did the the pre phase work and the VFX team that pulled out like the the amazing damage map work that was required for that, we wouldn't we would be sitting here and talking about this. So, like, also like huge. Kudos to to the weapon feature team and to to the VFX team that really helped us achieve what what we have now. Yeah, if, if, if for for backers who are, who who are used to mining and exploding and dying, uh, you can send your letters to Dan Treppen, care of Platinum Imperium Games. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the new address. I used to know the old address, and I realized that you have the new, ad you have the new address there. I don't know it. Um, Torsten, I want to touch on something that, that you touched on. There's a, there's, an, there's a misconception that applies to everything that, uh, that you touched on, that when th from the moment we say, oh, this is something we want to do, that it must be an active development. 
that all things are in de active development at the same time. Um, because we've been talking about salvaging for years and years and years. That's not the same as you have had the resources available to you, the schedule available to you, and you and your people to actually work on it, uh, which, like I said, it was a relatively short window for this first iteration there. And I just wanna, I wanna mention that that phenomenon can be applied to every single aspect of Star Citizen. It's when you saw your first jump points at CitizenCon 2019. Jump points have not been in continuous development for the last four years. The first time you saw the interior of the Hull Sea, uh, which has recently been added to the 320 uh, 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 outlook, um, that has not been in continuous development for the last several years and stuff. So I just I want to encourage people to utilize the resources, uh, the public roadmap, uh, which is overseen by uh, you know uh, community manager Jake Capella, who does a great job there. Not just the release view, but the development view uh, is probably your best way to see whether something is in active development uh, or not. Um, sometimes it still falls out because sometimes things change and we don't up get the website updated quite as uh, frequently. Uh, no fault through Jake Capella, just it's a big hairy machine with a thousand people across five studios. Um, and then also the monthly reports. Uh, the monthly reports uh, that go up on the RobertSpaceIndustries.com website is another fantastic way to keep informed of the things that are in active development. So if, you're, if there's a lot of, uh, we see a lot of comments and I'm gonna get a little personal here. So bear with me, Dan and Tor Torsten. Uh, when folks in uh, uh, on the YouTube or the Reddit or Spectrum, you know, comment on Inside Star Citizen, for instance, like why are, why are they not talking about this or whatnot? The answer is almost always, it's not in active development right now. Or if it is in active development, it's not at a point where it's changed enough from the last time you've seen, you've seen it in order to show it to you again. Uh, and, or it's just, it's not far enough along period. And we wanna wait until it can, we can present a more uh, uh, visually appealing and uh, a sustainable uh, story to you than uh, earlier days and stuff. So there are always many factors that, that go into it. Also, sometimes it's just, you know, person's on vacation or person's over here and they're not unavailable or whatnot. So there's always many factors. Uh, but I encourage you to utilize the uh, development tracker uh, uh, aspect of the public roadmap, not just the release view and those monthly reports. They're going to be your best, 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 best tool to know what is currently in active development. And then uh, ISC kind of comes at the end of, of, of all that because you definitely want to show stuff. We, we have a show where we just talk. That's this one. But ISC, we want to we want to be able we want to make sure those things are far enough along to show whenever possible. Um, so salvage. Where do we want to go with this? Uh, we know munching is, is in our future. Uh, talk to me about where we want to take munching. Where, where, what's next for uh, hull scraping? Uh, what can you tell us, Thorsten? So <clears throat> hull scraping for now is, uh, I want to say on a rest, but that's not entirely true because it will get touched once we, or while we are working right now on the munching aspect. So some improvements will come uh, with our munching release that will also affect the hull <laughs> scraping part of it. But uh, yeah, so the next step for for salvage was uh, yeah what what was released right now in three nineteen, which is the the item uh, stripping. So that is already a huge step forward for for the salvage gameplay loop. And I think it was even one of the most requested, most waited for, however you want to phrase it. But but. Like I, I, I personally am really happy about it because it ties in really nicely with all the features that we internally work on. Uh, so it, the, the synergy is really, really, really nice with, with uh, like even with refueling in the end because you can switch out your, your fuel pots. Uh, there are still things that we need to do there, right? So um, it was already called out <clears throat> in several points on Spectrum or in other, in our community videos or from in other channels that there, there are still a lot of things that we need to do to make it work perfectly. We are aware, so, and we are working on that. Um, but yeah, then the next big step, and I think that will be the, the most fun, and I'm personally looking forward the most to that, is uh, actually the munching. So, yeah, who, like every reclaimer owner will be happy to actually be able to use their, their claw at some point on, on any debris ship. 
And uh, yeah, but not only is it important for for those ship owners, but it's also important now with PES. So I think that is I think that is even more important than than any any gameplay right now. We need we need cleanup, and there's no better way to do cleanup than uh, to gamify it and then like have it rewarding. In, in the sense of yeah, you you destroy the ships. It's fun to destroy those ships or to those debris pieces, and mm. then you convert them into resources, and then you are e either able to sell those for for like just profit, or you use the resources you gather for for crafting them coming in the very far future. So you're... this is a sorry one one thing. Uh, this is an important. Uh, it's not a shift in mentality. It's a good mentality that we've always had. But I think it's it shows especially with PES. Yes, we filled up the uh, universe with a lot of wrecks and a lot of junk. But what we're doing right now, we're we're starting to introduce the gameplay that's going to clean it up. And munching is just one of things. Uh, we know there's a big mess happening on the space stations, on the landing zones. So we will be introducing systems that also will tackle that. But we're not, we don't want to just have, yeah, just clean it up faster, just to remove right. it and destroy basically PES. What we're going to do is involve the player into it. You don't want to so hide the location. The it's cleaning. Then the the players will will have a chance to do that and get, gain some rewards uh, from that. Yeah. So so you're both you'd say you both are really looking forward to munching. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, you you both like stripping. There's nothing wrong with stripping, but you're really looking forward to munching. Uh, I cannot talk about it that in detail, but uh, I I'm I'm really really looking forward to to this. Yeah. yeah. If you had to pick munching or stripping. Uh, munching for the upcoming oh, munching oh, release. Uh, Pardon? Me make camera too. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're watching the last show of Disco Lando, only at twitch.tv slash star citizen. Let's move on to tractor beams. Uh, tractor beams are getting a uh, uh, a lot of fun stuff in 3.19. Uh, give us the quick rundown for folks who may not have seen uh, last season's ISC on it, Thorsen. Uh You can now attach and detach uh, any ship items and uh, some of the internal components uh, with your tractor beam of choice. And has that been, uh, 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 internally, has that been a smooth uh, uh, addition <laughs> to the game? <laughs> or... No, How's no, that no, been going? No, no, not at all, especially <laughs> with like, uh, so there, there are several issues that we were facing, right? So I think the biggest one is actually um, how do we get items comfortably out of the inventory and then place them uh, on your ships, right? So your station inventory, how do you get the items out of there and then have them accessible? So that was, and there we had a lot of painful uh, sessions like when I was talking about, I think in our last ISC that yeah we had the the cutlass black repaired with prepared with with all the mining heads in there. Yeah, yeah, we, we can do that. We we can cheat. <laughs> we can yeah. spawn items. We don't have to do the the annoying part of actually equipping the, one of your ships and then like uh, pulling the items off and then um, yeah. So so this is this is something that we uncovered and but yeah I think that the most drastic one is which which I'm yeah me as a player I'm I'm really like not so happy about this decision but me as as sitting here with my CIG hat on and so I think that's the only decision we could come up with is uh, deactivate tractor beams again in the green zones because uh, I think in one of our earliest fleet week test sessions we had players like basically ripping out all the items and the entire fleet week hall was just like uh, impassable <laughs> because like everything was lying around and yeah that that's not fun for players right because that that also adds to yeah like even though you, you couldn't even carry out the, the the big weapons out of through the elevator out right so you did, didn't even have a benefit of it it was just like bringing havoc to the world and making everyone yeah. else lives miserable so yeah we, we had to jump in and 
uh, come up with this temporary solution and uh, yeah, deactivate the tractor beam in the green zones. But uh, yesterday we, we activated at least again in the hangars. So there was, yeah, the, so shout out to, to Yaru who just did jump in and did a quick fix for that. So, yeah. No, it was, uh, I think people were going into the showroom and pulling the components out of the display ships. Is that what I saw? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, not, not even that. Like it's like even from the display stands, uh, shops weren't secure anymore. Like you could tear apart every shop and every every item in every shop. And uh, yeah, also because in Fleet Week we we always allow you to enter those ships and like like figure out or like explore the ships that, that you don't own, and mm -hmm. that also means you can sit in their pilot seat and then you can because. A crucial aspect of the tractor beam functionality is that you first have to unlock the items so that we don't have players griefing one another and just basically tearing the, your ship apart while even though you don't want it. So in the fleet wake you could sit in the pilot seat, unlock the items and then like basically st strip it, strip every item away and then uh, have another person that come in and then like why, why does the ship look so empty? So yeah. Not as bad as our, not as bad as our first in, uh, 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 IAE, where somebody actually started a ship and flew it through the convention center. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, you can, you can, you can actually fully power these on and fly them." Okay, that's a problem. So this, this is this is what we always do. We we add new things into a very complex environment and set of systems, and there will be some points of failure. And then we we look at those, we try to fix them. With the with the tractor beams kind of being used usable in in green zones, uh, there will have to be some updates to the law of the place yep. that will need to support some things. As Torsten said, the the shops will need some updating. This is what always uh, happens. You, you you try something and then you realize there's a lot of things that start, get started yeah. in motion. Put in motion, it's an avalanche, and then you have to kind of. Get all the pieces fixed, and that's because we build everything systemically. Though we 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 build everything to to function as yeah, no as, hunt scripting here. <laughs> exactly, all, all as functionally and diegetically within the universe as possible, so that those mysterious interactions are what generate you know emer, uh, uh, yeah, emergent gameplay. But they also generate a lot of the oh, okay, we're going to need something to you know address that. Yeah, Turning them off in green zones is a temporary thing, but yeah. It, it's it's always emerging gameplay for for the players and headaches for us. But yeah, we we'll get them done and we'll we'll move on to the next one. So uh, uh, we're gonna take a real short break here. Uh, when we when we get back, we'll get to some uh, uh, backer questions uh, from Spectrum. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna have to check my email. Yes, but I mean, it is stripping and munching. They didn't make anything up. That's what they're working on. Okay. 
Love you too, Chris. Bye. All right, so we're back. And uh, we're still here with Dan Treffin and Torsten Lyman talking about uh, mining and salvage and tractors, oh my. Uh, at this point, uh, we put up a thread earlier in the week. Uh, when I say earlier, I think it was like actually yesterday uh, up in Spectrum to collect questions. Uh, so we're gonna, pull some, we're gonna pull some of the questions from the thread, uh, starting uh, with uh, no stranger uh, to Star Citizen Live, uh, Salty Mike, who reads, who wrote rather, uh, what are the plans on making the item port flow much simpler than the current travel to armistice and remove items that, and repeat for mining? Uh, what are the plans on making the item port flow much simpler than the current travel to armistice and remove items and repeat for mining? This is a key part of the new experience and it is severely hindered by the current item and inventory system. So we cannot fix it for all the items right now. But uh, so we already have at least, yeah, so today we got it internally working that you can uh, move the, at least the sub items for, for the mining ads more comfortably out of your station inventory onto the ground, pick them up, carry them <laughs> and bring them over to, to your ship. But there are some, some issues that we still have to solve. So, and uh, yeah, once we get that sorted, uh, we will, probably push it out but for the the other items especially for the bigger ones it's more complicated because um yeah there, there is no way right now even with the, the tractor being deactivated in the green zones uh, to prevent players from messing up your your spaces or even the the stations right so if you have uh, like a giant uh, power plant and you just drop it in grim hex you could basically block away all the asop terminals and then no one would access that be able to access them because tractor beams won't work you cannot push push them around and uh, yeah so this is definitely not something that we can do for with, with all the issues that we pointed out with the tractor beam being activated in the green zones so sadly we cannot do that but also we want to do it right which means that uh, we are dependent on the freight elevators because the freight elevator is basically the uh, proper uh, connection between your your virtual inventories and your real space, right? Because like pulling something out of thin air is weird. Yeah. Let's put it this way. So you you definitely want to have the the freight elevators there. Uh, next question is from Luxor. Uh, uh, Caterpillar owner, uh, how will hull mounted tractor beams, like on the Caterpillar, be able to move cargo inside the ship considering the tractor beam is located outside of the ship and away from the cargo hold? Yeah, we, we are aware of those. So um, we are working on uh, also the vehicle side of the tractor beams and uh, yeah, those, those need to be updated. Simple as that. When you say updated, you mean the tractor beam locations moved? Um, so we talked to, to the vehicle team about that and uh, they had to do, especially for all the older ships, they need to look into the tractor beam setup more thoroughly than just for, for the newer ships. So yes, they, there might be some, some updates on the actual item position for those to like, work actually properly. With, with the system. Right, because the tractor beams at present are very line of sight, so you wouldn't want, it'd be weird if the beam like curved and turned and... Yeah, yeah no, no. That would be, that would be weird, yeah. Yes. It's, a, it's the standard thing we do with the, with all our ships. We uh, we release them and then the systems come online and we have to rethink a few things. If people remember the prospector used to have this laser that was pointing downwards. Right. Um, yeah, we just had to, we just had to adjust based on the system and eventually it all works out. Things are built with the best information we have at the time. And exactly. So, uh, let's see. Optimus, no, Kniebel. There we go. Uh, will we be able to buy empty mining bags and also drop them from inventory to easily attach and trade? Uh, the, the question about dropping items also applies to mining lasers, mining components, and other similar objects. There were a lot of questions in the thread about mining bags. So... <laughs> so Dropping, no, but using the freight elevator to pull them out and then uh, using them or storing them in their cargo hold, yes. Because as described, we don't want this uh, magic appearance of items. 
So we really want to wait for the proper system, which is the freight elevator, to pull out those entities into the real world. Gotcha. So world. when you're saying drop them from inventory, you, you don't want to pull them out of imaginary yeah, the thin, thin air. air, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they they will definitely drop from the ship. So once you fill them in your prospector, you'll be able to drop them, and a refinery with a tractor beam will just pick them up, take them, empty them, refine. Them. Drop the empty one. You pick it up and put it in your prospector. So, on. but but that that should already work, right? So you can already yeah. detach uh, the uh, the mining sacks uh, from from the prospector, and the more you can already put them on the cargo grid. Sadly, so this is also something that we are actively working on is making them detectable by the uh, commodity stores, so that you can sell it, but also for the refinery, so that you. Uh, place them on someone else's ship and then uh, fly to a refinery and that person then is able to uh, start the refining process for the prospector owner. So right. it is and also important to us that it's not only, uh, yeah, basically it's all tying in with the group, group gameplay that yeah. members of your group can actually do the same uh, actions as, yeah. as you would as the owner. To and, then, that. and then there's there's some ownership stuff with the mining bags. Like you know, if 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 I'm out on my prospector and I fill it up and I detach the mining bag and give it to somebody else, uh, uh, there was a time where the other person was getting a crime stat because it was considered stolen goods. Or it, it, does it own by the other player? Can that player now go sell the contents of that mining bag because it's theirs now? How is that working? How should that work? So it should work that every person that you allow to handle the content should be able to handle that content and yeah this is something that we are working on because what we also don't want is that if you're doing group trade routes and you have to split like the the, the content of your ship or whatever that it doesn't have one dedicated owner but it can have multiple owners that are valid there gotcha so a way to designate you know i'm giving this saddlebag full of you know, quantanium to this person and it is now theirs and they have full rights to it versus somebody has yep. taken it and now they would be a criminal. So. Correct. I think, I think the, the, fir the first step in this will be to allow party members basically to to share ownership and not get criminally charged or just, it's not theft even if you're part of the same group basically. Right. And then, you know, for, for the criminals, uh, you know, who get the crime stat for intercepting a saddlebag. You know, obviously they, they might have trouble selling it at a more reputable vendor, but as new locations come online that are less legally friendly, uh, there might be other opportunities for them to sell their misbegotten goods. Yeah, of course, that is always the plan. Okay. Uh, Oh, that we literally just answered Optimus's 13, Optimus 13's question. We'll be able to give cell phone mining pods to another player. Okay, we just did that. Congratulations, us. Uh, 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 PC101 says, will we be able to use tractor beam in the armistice zone again? Uh, we talked about that, so we can skip that. Uh, Ehawk says, will hull stripping need to happen first when sal uh, will hull stripping need to happen first when salvaging, or can you just go straight into hull munching? Will the hull basically be a blocker to performing munching gameplay, or will you just get less RMC if you don't strip the hull first? Yeah, on this one you will completely lose out on the RMC, because like, yeah, well, you will at least lose some bits, right? If if you uh, start the munching process and that will break apart uh, your ship, there will be like some hull material will get lost. So this is definitely some material lost that we will have there. Do, 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 I'm sorry. Do we expect the the munching to provide RMC, or would it be like a different resource? Yeah. Well, so in in our first iteration, uh, the the munching will not provide. RMC, but uh, for for later, once we have actually, we, we, because the, the the well, the explanation would take a bit longer. Because okay. what what um, what we actually need to to have the proper materials is the, the the physicalized materials that like each component the ship made of is aware of which material it is made of, right? right. So if you break apart a ship, that the piece exactly knows what it is made of. 
and then you munch it, and then you actually get the exact components what what it was made of. This is something that um, is more complicated to do than what we are currently working on. Currently, we will be working on something that is more like it converts it to a dedicated or defined mix of materials. So um, we don't know uh, yet what the actual part is made of, but that will then come once the physicalized materials will come in. Yeah. So uh, with that, uh, we don't plan to uh, have RMC being part of that because we want to leave it like exclusive to the hull scraping. But uh, for the future, like even RMC as the material might might uh, look a bit different or get a bit right. more variety into it. Yeah. And if folks who have read the month, most recent monthly report, you'll know that they're prototyping munching uh, uh, now. So during the prototyping phase, anything can change. Whatever the truth today is can be a different truth tomorrow and stuff like this. It's one of the reasons we don't do uh, segments and stories you know, too much in the prototyping phase because it's just we like to wait until as many of the details are locked down as possible. True, the, you know, the only constant game development has changed, but we do try to make a threshold. <laughs> You know, at least, you know, get to a certain level of certainty before we start telling those stories. Um, but ultimately what I heard is that it's really important to both uh, strip and munch whenever possible. Yes, but it's it's not a requisite, right? You can munch, but you lose uh, some material or okay. some profit. It, it might be with a reclaimer. If you have enough things to munch, you're just going to skip on the stripping because you just have so much stuff to munch that it's maybe more lucrative. But if you have only one wreck, then it's worth to squeeze every ounce of resources out of that. I love my Frankfurt friends. Uh, I, 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 I hope they still like me after the show. Um, Soriel says, will the tractor beams be a single focused beam at ship level or will it be a variable cone with lowering power the wider we go? Uh, this person clearly wants to like cast a net uh, over an area to see if they can pull in more things at once. So uh, for now it is a single target beam and the, the reasons are more complex as well because uh, we, we are facing some, some um, like if we would allow the the ownership of so multiple items, that will get really complicated with with uh, physics and synchronizing those physics. So we decided for now that we will just go for for one target per beam. But uh, yeah, on the on the other side, we were talking about like okay, how can we utilize the technology that we have with a tractor beam to affect multiple objects? So there there were like I think then brought it up at some point, these distortion fields or something like that, right? Okay. Uh, oh, do you have something okay? Uh, Sorry, uh, not, not much to say about that right now. It's still too early. Uh, again, this is stuff where it's, uh, at this point it's in, I would call it ideation. It hasn't even been prototyped yet. Right. So confirming anything at this point would be a bit premature. So let, let's see where we, yeah. where we get to. We'll, we'll update as soon as we have more. Um, Overseer uh, 0513 or 0513 says, we have seen the tractor beam be, we have seen the tractor beam able to pull off components. Is there going to be a way to place them into station inventory so we can actually use them? On the same line, if we cannot pull components out of inventory, how are we going to change the mining equipment? I think we, so, we answered that already. Did we? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So the cargo, the cargo elevator, the hangar cargo elevator right. is gonna is gonna offer this functionality. You'll be able to pull any item that you have in that station into that hangar through the cargo elevator, then put it wherever right. you want on your ship, equip it, and it also works the other way around, where you pull from your ship, put it on the cargo elevator, goes into the station. And one other thing you'll be able to pull with that is uh, pull vehicles. So you'll be able to say, well, I want the ballista on my ship and you pull it with a cargo elevator, comes with a cargo elevator, you drive it up into your ship and take off. We'll move move towards physicalizing as many aspects of the game as possible, basically. Yeah, no more no more magical teleporting of inventory. Uh, Priton says, will there be weight and volume restrictions on tractor beams and how will size and specialization of the tractor beam affect them? Uh, yes, there, there will be limits on uh, the the mass uh, a tractor beam can carry that is uh, and defined by the, the tractor beam size as well as the volume 
and uh, we were even considering like having exclusive uh, tractor beams for that they are specialized in in handling cargo and others are specialized in handling uh, uh, basically the detaching mode so uh, there, there are no clear decisions yet on how these exclusive uh, tractor beams might look like or if we even go down that road but uh, the, the, the definite plan is, yes, there will be hard limits on uh, the mass the tractor beam can carry and uh, the volume. The, the, the multi-tool right now is just like, yeah, we, we wanted to allow you to play with this feature, right? And th that meant uh, we basically make it so overpowered that it's really unrealistic, right? Uh, like uh, a tiny gun like, carrying several tons of weight is just like, yeah, it's fun, but not realistic. <laughs> Um, as far as the stuff that you get through salvage, are there plans to expand it to composites, glass, metals, uh, any other materials? We touched on that already with, with yes. So yeah, once okay. the, the physicalized material comes in, right. you will have all the, the uh, different resources everything is made of. Sorry, I'm, I'm clearly losing focus. I'm just stuck on munching and stripping right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, you, you mentioned uh, you mentioned a big uh, part of the of the mining improvements in 319 was wanting to uh, provide more use and viability for the Argo, uh, the Argo SRV with its uh, multiple beams. Um, uh, this question is from Disco Lando. <laughs> Can you do anything about the Rock DS? <laughs> You don't want an honest answer from okay. me on this one. Uh, hold on. Dear John Crew, I have to. Sorry. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're, we're, at, we're almost at the end, folks. We're almost at the end. Can you tell? But, but what, what, one thing I wanted to point out, it's not only the, the Argo Mole, right? So it's not only, we didn't focus only on the Argo Mole multi-crew mining. We also had Prospector multi-crew mining and even multiple Argo Mole mining in mind, right? So the, 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 the there are areas in Stanton where it is more, or where it's more viable to have multiple prospectors versus there are areas in Stanton where it's more viable to have the mole running right. while running your mining business. So no, we didn't forget about the solo miners and no, we didn't forget about the solo miners that from time to time want to work in a group with other solo miners. So uh, yeah, the, this this is accounted for in our balancing up. It's not solely on buffing the mole, what I, I, I read so far. It's, right. well, there, 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 is a, there was a decision behind that that was basically buffing both ships in their own way or yeah and let's put it this way in different ways <laughs> yes uh, uh we have time for maybe one two or three more uh carl pigeon i'm just gonna call you carl uh tractored boxes damage the cargo grid hull of ships at an alarming rate when loading even at low speeds uh what can be done to make this contact softer uh less explosive it's an issue that we have to fix. <laughs> yep, it's a bug. We're 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 researching. We're working with the physics guys. We're looking into why the the energy happens that uh, it causes all this wreckage. Uh, it's uh, there's also some problems that come between networking and physics because sometimes there's some synchronization issues. And yeah, we're investigating. We'll get to, we'll get to the bottom of it. Right. So it's, it's not intentional. Okay, so fair. So it's, it's not developing a new feature, changing the feature, it is figuring out what is causing them to hit the pad so hard. And yeah, just a bug. Okay. Uh, McGonagall says, will the Argo SRV tractor beam be capable of moving asteroids? For multiplayer mining ops, can we tug asteroids together uh, for our party members in the prospector slash mole? So uh, right now, how, how we originally designed um, uh, mining, we just made all of our harvestables, uh, which mineables are part of, we made them static. And it was the simple thing to do back in those days. And I think now we're starting to get to the point where with tractor beam and all these features, there is a point in making it uh, uh, dynamic. So until now, and even, even right now, you, if you just crash into a, a fresh mineable with your ship, doesn't matter if you crash a, a Bengal carrier, that, that 
rock is not moving. Uh, but at this point, we can start looking into having them movable. And there's no reason if you can move, if you have a tractor beam strong enough to move a ship of that mass, of the same mass as the rock, there's no reason it couldn't move that rock. Uh, we already we've already saw some uh, some things happening when uh, lootable boxes were right. uh, were tractor beamable. So we know there's there's some small problems there that we still need to overcome, but uh, it, it is doable. So we'll probably be going to be heading in that direction. Uh, I I I feel like if I'm allowed to speak for you, I've known you and, and Torsten long enough to know that if there's a way to make towing asteroids around possible and relatively safe and not balance breaking stuff like this we'll, we'll probably pursue it wait until they tow them at, at really ludicrous speeds and uh -huh. they crash them into stations just just wait for that that yeah. is the first thing everyone will do to see whether you can you, you can bring it with you into quantum let it go like oh like yeah there's i i don't i think it's a secret to say we want it we want to see what happens but uh yeah, game yeah. development. We'll at least try it. Okay. And then uh, the last question uh, from somebody whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce because it has a bunch of numbers in it. Um, is everything going to be a beam? No. <laughs> no, we were joking. So so the, I think, it, was it the last ISC where, where you asked? But, but, well, yes. we are aware of that we have a lot of beams in our game. But that doesn't mean that we want it, right? We, we, we also want to have, like, more variety in how, like, our gameplays are, are visually represented. That means that we are actively looking into finding, like, interesting ways of, of not utilizing beams for, for the stuff that we are working on. And, yeah, I can tell you that, like, munching is, uh, is definitely up, up there for... <laughs> For not using a beam, at least for for the reclaimer side of it. Yeah, it's a, 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 a lot of folks in the in the comments. We, we make a joke out of it right now, but there are plenty of people in Spectrum and Reddit and stuff like this that are, they have, understand that you know a, a beam is kind of the first and easiest way to get a to get a feature into players' hands to test all, all you know a whole bunch of its functionality to 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 start this process of development and iterative testing and stuff like this. But uh, yeah, it, like Dan said before, the, we want to physicalize as much as possible. So I don't think beams will, I don't think I don't think there's a version of the game that'll ever be devoid of beams because beams are all are still cool and they're a very sci-fi uh, thing. But uh, Yes, as many opportunities to physicalize and put your hands on things as possible. Uh, that's what the trolleys are for. You, you, you know, it, people ask why are you putting trolleys in when we've got handheld tractor beams, uh, stuff like this. Uh, obviously, munching uh, freight elevators. You know, you know bring, physically bringing stuff up instead of, you know, just dumping things into the hangar by, by beams. Just we're going to look for every opportunity to physicalize things whenever possible. Just maybe not in the very first iteration because we want to get things into people's hands. Am I right? Am I wrong? I feel like I'm right. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Just my, my my you don't even want to see my team's notifications right now. Uh, we're going to the bar after the show. <laughs> That's it. Dan Torsten, you've completed another successful episode of Star Citizen Live. How do you feel? Well, good. It was a pleasure. Uh, thank you for watching, uh, folks at home, uh, folks at work, uh, folks in your car. Captain Richard, you still watching your car? I don't know. Maybe just go out there just to feel comfortable. Um, join us uh, next week. Uh, next week's uh, Inside Star Citizen is our first look at content for the upcoming Alpha 320. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the new derelict outposts that are being added to the planets of Stanton. Uh, these are, these are full-on uh, villages in some, in some cases, uh, all new places for a variety of, of gameplay and missions and mission content and stuff. Uh, so you're not going to want to miss, miss that. I'm especially fond of the, uh, one of the forest locations, which you saw uh, earlier in the show during our intermission. Uh, and then we'll be right back here on Star Citizen Live for our 
improved new player introduction, where we'll have Todd Pappy uh, on the show, and we're basically going to uh, take you through the, 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 the new player tutorial that's also coming online with Alpha 319. You might have seen the updated signage in, in Art Corp and everything, and we're going to run through the whole thing with a developer commentary here uh, with, with Todd and uh, some others. So come on back for SEL for that next week. Uh, for Dan and for Torsten, I'm Jared. Uh, take care. Be nice to each other, and um, I'm sorry for almost everything I've said this show. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>